Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about sound bars, and we'd like to thank Megan Allen for liking and sharing the podcast. Next week, we're going to be publishing our fifth book, and starting Friday, August 10th, we're going to have it five days free on Amazon, and we'll put together a podcast in the middle of the week to remind you. Exciting. So you get your free book. Mm Mm-hmm. Dolby Laboratories started working on noise reduction in the 1960s, and in 1975, they developed Dolby Stereo for movies, and Star Wars was one of the first movies to be recorded using Dolby Stereo, Hmm. and on billboards at the time, they advertised Star Wars in 70mm Dolby 6-track stereo sound. They came out with Dolby Surround in 1982, and Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound was used in Batman Returns, in 1992. Are you just going to give us a history lesson on movies? <laughs> and one of the first sound bars with a subwoofer came out in 1998 for Homes by Alltech Lansing. Okay. A sound bar is a speaker system that's housed in a long, narrow cabinet that you can set under a TV or mount on a wall under a wall mounted TV. And most flat screen TVs now don't have the room for quality speakers because the cabinet is so thin and the speakers are now facing down. Hmm. So by adding a sound bar to Where were they facing before? You'd have speakers that were facing forward, so they you know, so you'd get the full impact of the sound. Mm-hmm. So adding a sound bar now to these flat screen TVs, you get a much better sound quality. It's going to make dialogue more distinct and clearer, and music and special effects are gonna have more impact. Mm-hmm. There are two types of sound bars, active and passive. The active sound bars have a built-in amplifier, so you just plug the sound bar into an outlet connected to your TV and you're done. And this is going to be the most popular. A passive sound bar needs an amplifier or a receiver to drive the sound. And this is more for a home theater where you'd be using the sound bar as part of your sound system. Okay. Some sound bars are designed to give you a full range of sound, including a deep bass, and other sound bars have a subwoofer that's going to connect to the sound bar with either a cable or wireless. And the wireless subwoofers give you more flexibility on placement. Where are you supposed to put it? Well, they, it really depends on what type of sound you want. Some pros recommend putting it within a few feet of your sound bar. Some of them are tuned together, so they'll have ports that help equalize the sound. But other subwoofers, it doesn't matter where you place it. The pros are saying that it's hard for you to tell where those deep frequencies are coming from. Hmm. So you can put it almost anywhere. You can kind of hide it behind something if you don't like the look of your subwoofer. What do you mean? It looks like a speaker, right? Right. But if you don't like that standing out, if you just want a sleek look of your TV and a sound bar, and you don't want that big thing sitting next to your TV, you can hide it behind like a chair or a sofa or a potted plant. (laughs) And that way, uh, you know, it just looks better. <laughs> when you're shopping for sound bars, you're primarily going to see 2.0, 2.1, 3.0, 3.1, 5.0, 5.0, and 5.1, but there are other variations. The first number is how many channels. So a 2.0 system would have stereo sound, one or more speakers on one side, one or more speakers on the other side, and that's going to separate the sounds coming into the left and the right channel. So it's not the number of speakers. Right, so 2.0 would be two channels. So it could be one, but it could be multiple speakers for each channel. Exciting. A 3.0 system would have an additional center channel to isolate the dialogue. So if you're watching a lot of movies, the dialogue's going to be clearer, and it keeps the dialogue coming out from the center. So this allows special effects to sound wider or have more movement. Can you control it? So if you're watching something in surround sound, that center channel, you'll be able to adjust. If there's a movie with very low dialogue, you'd be able to boost that. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. 5.0 is surround sound, so you're going to have a front, left, and right channel, a center channel for dialogue, and two surround channels. And most sound bars create the effect of surround by bouncing the sound off the walls or delaying the sound effects. Okay. If you had a home theater, you'd have to have two surround speakers to the side or just behind the listening area. Mm -hmm. So that's what's nice about a sound bar is you get the effect and everything in one unit rather than having to have multiple speakers. 2.1 would be two channels with a subwoofer. 
So the second number lets you know it comes with a subwoofer. So does that mean like in the unit or separate? Separate. So some sound bars will have deep bass and they don't require a subwoofer. And, but if you see 2.1, it's going to have an additional subwoofer. I've seen 5.2, so it surrounds sound with two subwoofers. So you would need two potted plants? <laughs> right. So if you want the full dynamic sound from action movies or music, a subwoofer is going to give you deep bass. And 5.1 surround sound is the standard used by Dolby Digital, DTS, THX, and others. What's so, DTS? So it's just another company. It's Digital Theater Sounds, THX. It's just different companies, and they have their own systems. Okay. So a 5.1 sound bar is going to give you great sound for movies and effects because you're getting the sound coming through all those different channels. Hmm. DTS-X, Dolby 7.1, Atmos, and other systems will add upward-facing or ceiling speakers. So if you have 3.1.2, 5.1.2, or 7.1.2 systems with a third number, that means you have speakers that are adding sound effects from above. If you have a home theater, you'd have two ceiling-mounted speakers if that third number's a two. Mm -hmm. 5.1.4, you'd have four ceiling speakers or speakers that bounce the sound off the ceiling. If you have a sound bar that's 5.1.2, you'd have two speakers that are tilted up and they're bouncing sound off the ceiling. You'd have a subwoofer, three front channels, and two surround speakers or channels. You sound very excited about How this. cool is that? Some Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray movies are using Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and some Atmos content is on Netflix and Vudu. What's Vudu? Vudu is a streaming service. So the Dolby Atmos... Really? I gave you an opportunity there. I said, what is Vudu? And you're not going to go on a tangent? I, you know, I should have looked up something about Vudu. Wow, our listeners are going to be very disappointed. <laughs> ah, I feel bad. <laughs> So Dolby Atmos can make it seem like sounds are in a specific location to give a three-dimensional effect. Hmm. They say sound engineers can place up to 128 distinct sounds in specific locations in space, and the sound quality is going to have better clarity and depth. And Amazon Prime Video mm -hmm. is going to have their Jack Ryan series in Dolby Atmos. How excited are you? I'm, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I know. <laughs> When you're shopping for sound bars, some have kits to add wireless rear speakers to fill larger rooms with a more complete surround sound. So if you have a large space, it's nice to have that option. So you can kind of customize it to what you want, right? Right. That's nice. If your TV is going to be sitting on an entertainment center or a TV stand and you're going to have your sound bar below it, you'd want to measure the distance between the bottom of the TV and the stand and also the width. And then look at the feet or the center pedestal on the TV. How is that sound bar going to fit there? You may want to fit it between the feet so it sits flush with the TV. Right. Or you may want it the same width as the TV just for that look. Right. I don't think you'd want it any longer. Yeah, probably look a little weird. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't want to block the bottom of the TV either. Right. Or the remote sensor. That's what I'm saying. R right. Well, you don't want to block the sensor or you don't want to block the screen. You don't either want to block one. anything. Right. <laughs> Exactly. And a sound bar with a wall mount option is going to give you more versatility. So even if you're using it on a stand now, it's nice to have that option because you may change the placement or your TV in the future. Right. If your TV is wall mounted, you can get bigger wall mount sound bars that have larger speakers for a bigger sound, especially for large rooms, and they're great for music. So we stopped by Best Buy and compared some models. It was very exciting. And the salesman who helped us, he loved the big sound bars and high volume. So did you. Yeah, they were pretty impressive. And he was... I was kind of bored after the second one. <laughs> so he was emphasizing bigger sound bars have better resonance and deeper sound. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that the 2.0 and 2.1 are the most popular. And if you go with a 2.0 or 2.1... Get one that has dialogue-enhancing modes that's going to give you better audio clarity for movies. Right. So he played a lot of different sound bars by price, and the lower-cost bars definitely had a smaller, more tinny sound in comparison. Mm -hmm. But some of these, even the least expensive, they're going to have a much better sound than most of the TVs. Right. This, this is definitely something you should go to the store for and test them out. 
Yeah, it's pretty dramatic. I wouldn't have thought there was such a difference in some of them. And some models that looked identical, they mm -hmm. were night and day in the sound. And there's a pretty big jump in price. Right, yeah. And, and not all of the expensive ones, or not all of the inexpensive ones, had a bad sound. Some of the, just the moderate priced, you know, a couple hundred dollars had a pretty amazing sound. So the sound bars with the built-in bass or a subwoofer had the fullest sound, and he liked the sound bars from speaker companies. Right. So he was recommending Bose, Polk, Zvox, it's Z-V-O-X, Klipsch, so it's K-L-I-P-S-C-H, and Definitive Technology. And they did have an amazing separation of highs and lows, and you got a feeling of depth to the music. Well, what's interesting is he played the same song from his phone on each one of these, so you could hear the difference. Right, yeah, that was very smart. And he went from soundbar to soundbar, and then he went kind of from group to group. So You really just... like that song. Right. <laughs> yeah, he was rocking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Most soundbars are going to come with Bluetooth, but I would check to see if it has it when you're comparing. And this is going to allow you to connect your phone to it to play music or a podcast. Which, why didn't you have the salesman connect to our podcast? Yeah, I missed an opportunity there. Could have been blurring that throughout the store. <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi is another option. So this is going to let you stream music over the Internet or listen to audiobooks. So you can hook up to iHeartRadio, Audible, Google Play Music, or Spotify from an app on your phone or your tablet. Mm -hmm. And some sound bars can have Chromecast built in or Amazon Echo. And the sound bar that you have for your TV is the Polk Command Bar, and it has an Amazon Echo built into it. So it's like an Amazon dot right in the center of it. Mm -hmm. So you can have it control the sound levels. You can also do anything else you would do with a smart speaker. Right. So it's, it's a pretty interesting feature. So one of us talks to it a lot. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have a relationship <laughs> with your sound bar. And that Polk Command Bar also has an HDMI port specifically designed to plug in an Amazon Fire TV stick. Mm -hmm. It has a USB port also, so you can plug in the cord for power to the Amazon Fire Stick. It's very exciting. So, so these are nice features to look for. Mm -hmm. It fits really nice on my TV stand, too. Yeah, it looks sharp. It has the surround sound decoding, so you get simulated surround sound, and sound also comes out of the side. It has a wireless subwoofer, mm -hmm. so it gets an amazing sound. But I don't have a potted plant blocking it. <laughs> When you're comparing models, you want to look at the inputs. On inexpensive sound bars, you're going to have limited inputs. Some are just going to have an optical cable input. You might see digital coax connections, which are becoming less popular. Or you could have analog inputs for older TVs, either RCA or 3.5 millimeter. And the RCA or 3.5 is only supporting two-channel audio. For the optical input, you're going to use a fiber optic audio cable. So this is a thin cable that has strands of glass fibers to transmit pulses of light from the TV, and that's what's sending your audio signal. Isn't that wild? Usually called TOSLINK. It's T-O-S-L-I-N-K. It was originally developed by Toshiba, and they called it the Toshiba Link, mm -hmm. and they had to abbreviate it because that was too much <laughs> to say. And this is going to give you a much cleaner audio signal than analog cables, and it can also send Dolby Digital and DTS. So you can have 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound data being transmitted, and this is a very easy way to connect your TV to a sound bar, mm -hmm. and you're going to get surround sound. Exciting. You don't want to kink optical cables, and the input or output will have a spring-loaded dust cover or cap. If there's a cap, you're going to have to remove it before plugging in the cable, and the optical cable is going to have a plastic cap on the tip of the cable that's going to need to be removed. And you should check your TV. Some older models don't send a digital surround signal through an optical cable. Mm -hmm. HDMI inputs and outputs are going to allow you to use high-speed HDMI cables. And the high-speed HDMI cables will handle all of the surround sound formats, including Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. Hmm. So if your TV has an HDMI out or ARC port and your sound bar has an HDMI input, you can connect with an HDMI cable, and this is the best connection. You can use your TV as the hub to plug in Blu-ray players, game systems, streaming devices, and other components, and then send the audio out to your soundbar if your TV has multiple HDMI inputs. 
If you have a sound bar with multiple HDMI inputs and an HDMI ARC output, you can use your sound bar as the hub. So this is great if you have a wall-mounted TV and mm -hmm. then you have a video stand below it for game systems, DVD players, and other components. You can put everything into the sound bar and then have one high-speed HDMI cable going up the TV's HDMI ARC port, and that's going to be a very clean connection. That's so, what we did, right? Yes, yeah. So everything's yeah. running through your sound bar, and then we have one cable that's going up to your ARC port in your TV. And that sound bar you have has an ARC port also. We were able to get rid of a lot of wires down there. Yeah, yeah. So it looks better. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> and that ARC is audio return channel. Mm -hmm. So video passes to the TV, and audio passes back to the sound bar on that same cable. So it's I pretty. Don't so, how it works, so it's a pretty it, nice it, system. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> When you're comparing models, look for 4K pass-through if you have or plan on upgrading to a 4K TV mm -hmm. and you want to use the soundbar as a hub. So it should have 4K HDMI 2.0 or 2.0A HDR ports and have HDCP 2.2 software. Easy for you to say. So the HDCP 2.2 <laughs> is high bandwidth digital content protection, and this is going to prevent you from copying 4K Ultra HD content, mm. and this is what the movie and TV industry uses. So if you have a 4K TV with HDCP 2.2 inputs, all of your devices, like Blu-ray, your cable box, streaming devices, they have to support HDCP 2.2. So I think for I just blacked out there for so, a while. <laughs> <laughs> so for you to get 4K resolution, everything has to have this. If any device isn't HDCP 2.2, mm -hmm. you're only going to get 720 or 1080p resolution. You won't get 4K. So if you plan on getting a 4K TV, or this if you is have, really important. Or if you have, yes, hey, yeah, you pay attention. Right. <laughs> So you want your sound bar to have HDMI 2.0 or 2.0A, HDCP 2.2. Or the main thing to look for is 4K pass-through, and it's going to allow wow, you... Wouldn't that have just been easier to say instead of all those letters and numbers yeah. <laughs> well, over I, and I, over I, again? I want to sound fancy. <laughs> so this is going to decode all the advanced sound and color data, and it's going to decode the content protection. One other thing you might want to compare are the remotes and see if you can pair it with your TV. And sometimes if you have a certain brand TV, their sound bars, you can use the same remote to increase and decrease your volume. Right. So it makes it more convenient. Mm -hmm. Some top rated sound bars, Sony, Klipsch, so it's C-L-I-P-S-C-H, Nakamichi, N-A-K-A-M-I-C-H-I, -I, Sonos, S-O-N-O-S, Vizio, V-I-Z-I-O, Bose, B-O-S-E, Zvox, it's Z-V-O-X, Yamaha, Polk, JBL, Samsung, Definitive Technology, and LG. Hmm. Do you have anything else to add? If you're looking at a sound bar that's 2.0 or 2.1, make sure it's marked Dolby Audio or DTS Digital. That way you're going to get the simulated surround sound. 3.0 and 3.1 is going to give you a center channel, and 5.1, you're going to have all the surround channels. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for the ultimate in sound, you can get Atmos or DTSX. And if you have a 4K TV or you plan on upgrading, make sure it has 4K pass through. Very good. Let's wrap this up. Check out our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon on August 10th. We're going to have it free for five days. You could buy it, too, if you want to. After five days, it we're, well, we're bringing the price down to a dollar, so you can't beat it. So even mm -hmm. if you miss it free, it's a buck. You'll like it. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and Player FM. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. And you can follow Cindy on Twitter at Fix It Co-host. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.